This thing is so rotten in so many places that I'm not sure that I can actually save this, Jeff. This is not good. This is not good. It is, I mean, really, really bad. Let's jump back in time to when the slab first arrived in my old shop last January. I bought this from a lumber dealer in Texas called Hamilton Lee Supply, and this is a slab of pecan wood. Pecan isn't a typical wood that you would find at a lumber yard or a hardwood dealer, but I'm guessing most folks have used pecan wood at one time or another as firewood. And very quickly, I could see that the tree would have been better served in a burn pile versus getting milled up. I think I'm gonna have to uh, do like a full penetrating coat on this whole piece. I mean, this whole section broke off. There's more of it. I have to uh, clean that up, stabilize what we can. Honestly, we'll probably end up having to do a flood coat. So like I said, I bought this slab from Hamilton Lee after seeing it online. While pecan isn't a very common wood that you see tables built out of, this slab had a lot of interesting coloring with the super light sapwood and much darker and figured heartwood and it had a lot of spalting. Spalting is caused by a fungi extracting nutrients from the wood, which leaves behind those telltale black lines. And the other part of that equation is as the fungus is actually extracting the nutrients from the wood, this is the process of the wood breaking down or more commonly known as rotting. It's a fine line that you walk here with spalted woods to get that coloration of the black lines, which can be really beautiful, but then the wood breaks down too much and it's falling apart as it is in this case. To stop the process, typically the wood is dried in a kiln, which which kills the fungus and stops the breakdown of the wood fibers. As you can see, this slab, it's essentially beyond saving at this point. In some places, I can dig my finger down into the wood and it feels more like styrofoam than wood at this point. And everything just kind of crumbles into dust. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed. Okay, I was a lot disappointed. I paid a thousand bucks for this wood and it's basically unusable. I don't fault Hamilton Lee Supply for this. They have some amazing and more exotic species. And this is the chance that you take when you purchase such a spalted piece of lumber. My goal here is to save this slab. I'm hoping that if I can save it, it'll end up being a really unique table. The flip side of that coin is I've already invested a grand into this slab and now I'm taking more of a risk spending more of my time and more of my resources trying to turn it into something worthwhile. And this actually might be the most high risk, high reward project that I've ever taken on. So let's just have some fun. So far you've seen me clean up the slab to get it ready for epoxy pours. And I'm using a cuts all carving wheel to do the bulk of this cleanup. I've used other bladed carving wheels in the past and those are just too aggressive for cleaning up a slab like this. This cuts all disc is more of a burr and it can remove material extremely fast, but I have much more control over shaping everything to my desired shape. Some areas are so punky, it's like the cuts all disc is just deleting the wood and I'm really, really concerned that even penetrating epoxy is not gonna be enough to save this piece. So one of the best parts of having the new shop is having a dedicated epoxy pour room that's free from all the dust and the grime of the rest of my shop. And that's where I'm gonna be doing these pours. I'll be using Total Boat Penetrating Epoxy on this, which I've used this several times in the past, but never on this type of scale where essentially I'm soaking a nine foot long, two inch thick slab of wood in the stuff, just trying to save it. Also, one of the more interesting things about pecan that I didn't previously know myself is it's a species of hickory, which hickory is known for being really hard. As you watch me add the penetrating epoxy, notice how the middle or the heartwood is the darkest before applying the epoxy and how light all that sapwood and the rotten sections of the slab are. And then as soon as I start adding the penetrating epoxy, the colors essentially reverse. Now all those super light areas, which were the most rotten, are soaking up so much of that penetrating epoxy, they're getting super dark. And the heartwood that hasn't started to rot yet gets somewhat darker, but in contrast appears much lighter than those outer sections. As a matter of fact, as you'll see in a bit, this was meant to be the top of the table, but after brushing on a couple layers of penetrating epoxy, this section just looked like a big dark stain and wasn't as interesting as it was before I started this process. Great, I'm literally pouring more money into this thing and I'm still at this point questioning whether or not it's gonna pay off. First thing is I'm calling an audible and this is going to be the top of this piece. Originally this was the bottom, but when I flipped it over and we did the penetrating epoxy on this side, the color is much more, um, I don't know if consistent is the right word because it's not consistent at all, but you don't have those huge black areas that look like massive stains. So this side looks a little bit better. As I brush out more layers of penetrating epoxy, you can see some of the other factors I'm dealing with this slab that are due to its amount of decay 
And it's all these little bug holes. Each one of these holes needs to be properly filled with resin or I'm gonna have issues with the flood coats of the tabletop epoxy later as this is gonna cause bubbles and divots on the finished surface. The issue is there's hundreds of these little holes and conventional methods of filling these just weren't working. So I'm already running into several issues with this slab. On all these little bitty bug holes, what I tried to do was fill that with some uh, furniture wax. The problem with that is this wood was so spongy that it was actually staining the surface of the wood and I wasn't able to uh, sand that away. So I can't do that. So what I did was I just kept adding more and more coats of that penetrating epoxy until basically I've done a flood coat of penetrating epoxy across this entire slab. I'm not sure that all of those little bug holes are completely filled in, but there's another issue that I'm dealing with. So somehow there is this kind of scaly texture all over the top surface of this. I don't really understand why. The good thing is, is it seems to be just in the surface. I'm hoping I can just sand all this down really good, get rid of all that texture, So essentially worst possible case scenario has happened. As I'm sanding this, I can clearly see that that texture is not just on the surface, it's all the way through the epoxies. Now I'm gonna have to sand off this entire coat of epoxy. The good thing is it's softening up as I sand it and I should be able to take this tool right here and scrape off layers. But then I'm gonna have to re-sand the entire surface. You have to get this entire flood coat off or this table's gonna be ruined. Lesson learned, don't flood coat with penetrating epoxy. Probably pretty obvious to everyone else. Now it's obvious to me. So now I've got to scrape and sand down this entire side of the slab, which is now my top surface. Whereas I was hoping I could just pour the final flood coats of epoxy over this. So after a good five hours of scraping and sanding, we got the slab back down to the wood. But this meant I had to re-sand everything since that process left scratches all over the surface. And as you guys know, sanding is the best. No. No, it's the absolute worst. So I started to think this slab may actually be beyond saving, but I figured I would try one more thing. And this time I'm gonna soak it in some thick set epoxy. Now, thick set is for deeper pores up to an inch deep, but that lower viscosity also means it's gonna soak down into the wood. And I'm hoping that any epoxy that pulls in the surface won't end up with that same weird texture like the penetrating epoxy. I'm also hoping that this is gonna fill in the rest of those bug holes as this is still a huge issue that I have to be concerned about since all of these are gonna cause bubbles in that final tabletop flood coat that I'm planning later on. The following day, that thick set had cured enough that I could clean up the bottom and get this slab ready for the larger pours. And for those larger pours, I'm gonna be using Total Boat Thick Set Fathom, which is a deep pour system that allows you to pour up to two inches deep. Although I'm always a bit conservative with this, especially when I need the epoxy to be crystal clear like I do on this piece. I am trying something I've never done before with the finish of this table, where I create a texture on the bottom side of the table, and that's gonna give the top extra dimension in the epoxy sections, but I'll explain more about that and what I mean here in a bit. For now, I've gotta get that form prepped and I can drop the slab down into place. I wanna take a quick second to thank you all for watching and I'd hope that if you truly enjoy these videos and the things that I make, that you would hit that subscribe button. Honestly, it's the number one thing that you can do to support my channel and I just can't say thank you enough. Not joking around here from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for supporting me. I can't believe I get to do this every day. Whatever, just hit that subscribe button, watch my videos. You guys are awesome. Like I said, this is Total Boat Thick Set Fathom and I'm mixing up three gallons of this stuff for the first pour. And at this point, I've got all that money in the slab. I've got time, I've got materials, I've got epoxy, I've got what I paid for the slab. And at this point, I'm only about 50-50 on whether or not this project's actually gonna work out. So I'm pouring an inch deep at a time. Again, you could pour this two inches, but I'm being conservative. And here I can see the epoxy was seeping under the slab. So I had to mix up another gallon of Fathom. This time I kind of whipped it a bit too much with the drill mixer and that introduced a whole lot of bubbles. And that's why everything looks so cloudy right here. All these bubbles are very concerning, but I also know this stuff takes about 24 hours to gel up. So that should be enough time for all those bubbles to dissipate between now and then. 
This video is brought to you by Manscaped, a global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. Manscaped is trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, their hygiene and shower formulations, and new to the collection is a revolutionary beard styling kit for the modern man. Introducing the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped. So whether you've managed your mane for years or you're just getting started like me, what does the perfect beard grooming regimen look like? First start with a clean cut look at your face and head shape. The Beard Hedger trimmer has more than 20 lengths that can be selected with the zoom wheel, and then you don't have to worry about a million clip-on attachments for your trimmer. Number two, not all beard hairs grow the same. You can grow the perfect beard with the Manscaped Dermatologist Tested Beard Oil. And style your beard with the Manscaped Beard Balm that's paraben-free and dye-free. Number three, be patient. Let it grow and then trim up the edges with a powerful 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade that cuts hair in one stroke. The Beard Hedger is also waterproof for wet or dry operation. And number four, clean your beard and make it smell amazing. Manscaped's Beard Shampoo cleanses your beard. You're also gonna wanna ensure your beard is soft and smells fantastic. And Manscaped's Beard Conditioner papers your beard with nourishing oils and antioxidants that rehydrate the hair and leave you feeling silky soft. With the beard Beard Hedger Pro Kit, you even get a free accessory pack that includes a beard brush, a beard comb, and beard scissors. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off and free shipping when you use code JOHNNYBUILDS at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with code JOHNNYBUILDS at manscaped.com. All right, switching gears here, I'm working on the legs, which I'm gonna carve from Red Oak. And let me show you the design that I came up with and kind of what I'm going for here. So I wanted a solid hardwood table base that didn't require a stretcher. So I designed a pedestal base and I'm gonna make that by gluing up the pieces that I cut on the CNC to get to the desired thicknesses of each of the pieces. Now, pedestal bases are usually a very farmhousey sort of design. I don't really like farmhouse. I tried my best to stay away from any shape that looked too farmhousey. You guys know what I'm I'm talking about because I'm sure you've seen it a million times that sort of X style pedestal table base often made from just pine or something that I refer to around here as Oklahoma chic. Although unintentional, this base ended up having, I would say, a somewhat Japanese style shape, or at least I think so. Maybe it kind of looks like a symbol for pie. I don't know. You tell me what you think down in the comments below. This red oak that I'm using is eight quarter, which is a little less than two inches thick after it's been milled flat. And for the uprights, I'm gonna glue two of these together for a leg that's approximately four inches thick. So tack on another 350 bucks in material cost for the lumber. And at this point, I'm mildly optimistic this isn't gonna be a complete disaster. Now the base and the top horizontal glue up is three boards thick or about six inches wide. And I'm using these really nice Rockler parallel clamps here to glue everything up. And I'll make sure I'll drop a link for those and all the other Rockler products that I use in this video down below. And after those initial table base glue ups, I can do those next pours of Thickset Fathom Epoxy. It's been roughly 24 hours since the last pours and thankfully that first layer looked great. No bubbles, no dust nibs or anything like that in the epoxy. And I've got to say, having a dedicated epoxy pour room in the new shop is already paying dividends. These pours took roughly 10 gallons of epoxy and a total of six days to fully cure before we could demold it. Now, at this point, I have no idea how much the slab weighs, but with all that epoxy, the slab and the whole melamine form. This thing was heavy and me and Jeff were struggling just to move it. Even though I added caulking to the underside, the epoxy seeped all the way under the slab. So I've got to throw this back on the CNC to run a flattening pass to clean up that bottom. While it's on the CNC, I can also cut out the profile of the tabletop. And for this, I settled it on a seven foot long table that's 32 inches wide and has a radius on either end. The next step is the main event and the thing that I've been the most excited about this whole build. And at this point, I'm starting to feel pretty confident that I've saved the slab by essentially encasing it in liquid plastic. And I know that in and of itself is gonna get some hate, but consider this. Without epoxy, this wood would have been worthless. This whole tree could have been left to rot in a field or even worse, thrown in a landfill. But here I'm able to save this beautiful, unique slab and turn that into something that I think is gonna be really beautiful to grace someone's home for years to come. And if you disagree with any of that, the only logical thing that I can conclude is that you must hate trees, therefore all of nature, which means you also hate the planet and by extension, all the people living on the planet, which includes yourself, which makes me really sad that you hate yourself because I love you. 
Okay, like I said, this is the main event where I'm gonna power carve an organic texture into the underside of the table. I got this idea from a really cool Instagram account I follow called Tanella Wood. No clue if I'm actually pronouncing that correctly, but they make absolutely beautiful live edge slab and resin tables, often with this carved texture underneath, and it looks absolutely beautiful. I don't know exactly how they do it, but again, I'm gonna be using these cuts all disc, and I'm gonna carve out all that epoxy from the underside, which is gonna give it sort of a cellular texture when you look at it from the top. I should mention these cuts all discs are amazing for power carving wood and epoxy. And the one I'm using here is the most aggressive of the three discs that I own. And this extreme disc just plows through the epoxy, but it's not so aggressive that you don't have control. These things are really great. And I've got links for all those cuts all disc and this bird down in the video description below. So I've never carved anything like this before, so I'm truly winging it on this one. T-shirts available down below. But the process was fairly simple. These cars took about three hours all together, and I brought it back inside the shop to sand down all the high areas. And yeah, I know it looks super rough here, but now I'm gonna pour some Total Boat high performance epoxy in those areas that I just carved. And this is gonna smooth the underside back out, but still give me that sort of cellular texture that I want, or at least that's what I'm hoping it's gonna do. I have no idea actually, because I didn't ask Tanella Wood how they do this. I just kind of wanted to figure it out on my own. But as I started to brush it on, I was pretty confident this was gonna work and it ended up looking really, really good. I did two coats and I brushed on a layer of high performance epoxy that coated the entire underside of the table. All right, back to the pedestal bases and I can take those out of the clamps and clean them up before assembly. I'm also adding a small round over to the outside edges before assembling these with domino mortises and wood glue. All right, we're getting really close to the finish line. And next up, I can paint these pedestal bases. Now, the reason I went with red oak is because it's a lot cheaper than white oak, but it's just as strong and it has the same sort of grain pattern that I really like in white oak. And that's really what I want out of this piece. I'm gonna use an HVLP sprayer to spray on a few coats of this Total Gold paint from Total Boat, but I still want that grain pattern to show through after I spray it onto the wood. Essentially, I'm trying to make golden wood but I also think a black stain would have looked really good here. And this is another thing we kind of went back and forth on, but I don't know. I like the gold, but let me know what y'all think. Would you have done black or gold on the table base or even do something crazy? I don't, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. All right, back to the tabletop and the epoxy is cured on the underside. The top and edges needed sanding. And after that, I mixed up about three quarters of a gallon of tabletop epoxy. Now, this stuff is self-leveling and it's absolutely crystal clear. And at this point, I shouldn't have any issues with bubbles escaping from the wood beneath because all of the little bug holes from before are completely filled at this point. And I did not think that was gonna work out, but it actually did really, really well. I do like rubbing the tabletop coat on by hand since it's actually faster than using a spreader. And I'm able to evenly coat everything and get it all around the edges. Meet the newest tool in my shop. This is my OhmTech 130 watt CO2 laser. I don't have a lot of experience working with lasers, but I'm really excited to learn. So on this project, I'm just gonna do something real basic. I wanna create a medallion, okay? And this medallion is gonna get inlaid into the bottom of the table. That way, whoever buys this table, you know, they'll always know like who made it and where it was made. I tested it on some little eighth inch plywood. Didn't look very good. I'm gonna do it on some half inch purple heart. You guys gotta watch this thing. It's so cool. It's always fun adding a new tool to the shop. I'm really excited for what this laser can do in my upcoming projects. I've also got a plasma table from Avid, which is gonna allow me to do so much more, but with making these videos and the shop move, I haven't been able to assemble it yet. So 
I have my buddy Richard from 42 Fab cut a few mounting brackets on his plasma table to go on the top of the legs that I built. Here I'm adding Blacktail Studios N3 Nano Finish, and this stuff is the next evolution of furniture finishes. As I add the N3, let me sort of explain what this does. N3 Nano adds a nano layer of protection and hardness that not only makes the top extremely durable, but also enhances the sheen and the appearance. My pieces now aren't truly finished unless I've added N3 Nano Finish, and it really has been a game changer for the pieces that I build, especially on something like this, where it's a flood coat of epoxy, and I need something extra to protect that from getting scratched up. So if you're building or refinishing furniture, I highly recommend you check out N3 and find out for yourself. I've got a link for that listed down below. All right, with the top protected, I can flip this over and add the mortise for the table bases, as well as that medallion that I cut on the laser. And I'm just doing this on the CNC because it's just much faster and more accurate that way. The legs get attached to the bottom of the table with some elongated holes. And then I'll use threaded inserts to mount the table base to the table. For those threaded inserts, I'm using my Rockler drill guide to cut perfectly straight holes. And remember, Rockler and Total Boat are both longtime sponsors of my channel. So when you support my sponsors, you also support what I do here. And honestly, I just really appreciate that. And with that, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I'm gonna go ahead and call this table a success. Sure, I sank a bunch of money into it and man hours and materials, but if I'm not going for it with my projects, if I'm not taking risk here, then why even bother? And I have to say the biggest reward for me is that this is honestly my favorite table build to date. And the best part for you is that you can own it. I've got information on how you can purchase this table linked down below, and I'll even ship this anywhere in the lower 48 states for free. Or even better, if the buyer is in a reasonable driving distance, I'll just deliver it to you and set it up myself. All right, let me know what you think of this table. Do you like that carved texture or not? Make sure you get subscribed, and I've got a whole playlist of similar products queued up for you right here. Comment this if you watch to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.